Hey folks, for those who are wondering who saw the Twitter video a couple hours ago, yeah, I'm still in this same tank top. It has been a very busy day. I have been running around like a maniac. Uh, did the morning news uh, and then had Cat take the kids to a park. Uh, I've basically been wearing this all day. Went to the gym, spent a couple hours at the ranch. Oh, Observer Ranch is turning into quite the thing. But we had three pretty important stories, and they are all actually linked together here from the morning news. So I figured we would talk about them a little more. First, jump right into it. We showed the ocean temperature anomalies map. And while this is mostly being passed around as like, oh, look at all this red um, for the climate change propaganda, of course, there is that blue patch up there right next to Greenland. And the important thing about that is while the Beaufort Gyre is actually on the other side, sort of on the other side and north of Canada, the release pathway for that accumulated cold, fresh, desalinated water is actually uh, into the North Atlantic, uh, past Greenland there. And we saw, uh, well, we've seen for a couple of years, ever since Yale called it the cold climate bomb, getting ready to be unleashed on the world, we have been watching it accumulate and accumulate and accumulate. And earlier this year, we saw that it had plateaued and it was ready to release. A good way of thinking of that is uh, over the past couple of years, they noticed the cold climate bomb being constructed. And then earlier this year, construction was finished. We just didn't know how long the timer was. Um, we do not know for a fact that this was the release of the Beaufort Gyre, but it really is looking like that water is beginning to release down into the North Atlantic. Now, some people ask, how long is this going to take to really begin to affect the climate of the world? Well, this is part of the kind of thing you could see uh, that's related to what happened in the, uh, the movie The Day After Tomorrow. The problem is, that movie was way too extreme. It happened way too quickly. Basically, we returned to snowball earth in, in a couple of days. That's not really realistic. However, when you're talking about the upcoming months, specifically the, the winter months that, that are coming up for the Northern Hemisphere right now, and the next several years, we should begin to see if indeed this is the release of the Beaufort Gyre, and I'm going to be keeping a very close eye on the ocean temperatures in the North Atlantic just to see exactly what sort of situation this, uh, this is and if it's actually playing out that way. Uh, it will begin to drastically impact the global temperatures. This world, uh, no part of this world is an island, uh, speaking in metaphor there. What happens at the polar region affects the entire planet. That's in fact a lot of their premise in the, the global warming and the climate change story. But we've also seen this several times. Uh, veteran observers, if you've been paying attention, you have seen there have been tons of articles this year alone on how the Dansgaard Oshker events and the Heinrich events, which start at the polar region, absolutely have effects all the way down to the tropics. And so this is a pretty important uh, thing that we're looking for here. So Neptune, it has really been the focus uh, of the last year and a half or so. After Pluto's atmosphere collapsed, a fifth of it, 20% lost in just one year. Neptune has absolutely been the most important changing outer planet. We've seen the major storm reversal. Now, they've been watching storms, albeit, you know, from a bit of a grainy perspective. But they've been watching the storm patterns on Neptune for quite some time. This is the first one that went the wrong way. Indicates a very significant reversal of a major uh, internal system there on the on the what they call the outermost planet. They're wrong. Pluto is a planet. Don't ever let them take that away. Uh, we saw the mysterious cloud disappearance just a couple of days ago. And here, even though the headline is all about the dark spot, which is the first time they've seen the dark spot, it's the first time they've seen it from Earth telescopes. Voyager even saw it way back in the 80s. But I, I don't know how you write that headline when the real game changer is the fact that they spotted a bright cloud that they've never seen on any planet. I mean, they can spot lightning storms on Saturn and Jupiter. They've never seen anything like this anywhere on any planet. And the fact that it's absent from the headlines is just all too typical 
for uh, mainstream astronomy. Neptune is changing extremely rapidly. I think that this is definitely another symptom of the solar system shift here. And um, I guess we'll be looking in the years ahead for similar types of anomalies on Uranus, Saturn, even though we've already seen some anomalies there, Jupiter as well, we've seen anomalies there. Uh, and then of course, it'll be getting here to the inner solar system and eventually to the sun for the solar micronova. Speaking of which, gotta love an article like this. Um, first of all, I, I gotta love the original article that came out in April of last year. Boy, they, they tried so hard. There were even some mainstream articles written against both myself and Doug Vogt saying we were pseudoscientists, we were crazy, saying a micronova is not a thing. Don't worry, it's not a thing. And then here we go. We have micronova. Now this article was written by the exact same lead author of that paper from last year. And while they do still like to cling to the accreting binary uh, scenario. And while that certainly does work in terms of creating a nova, it's just not the only way to do it. We have seen this happen with single stars. Whenever they encounter material, it doesn't have to be from a binary like the little star that wandered into the dust cloud and exploded. We have seen uh, also stars have a nova event just from a powerful magnetic kick. Uh, one of the ones that first comes to mind is they saw a star come really close to what they call a black hole and simply the magnetic kick from doing that caused it to have a nova-like event. And so what's important here is the fact that they recognize and state explicitly, even while they are giving their opinion about what caused this, that they have not nailed it down. They just don't know. And Boy, what a breath of fresh air in astronomy. We just don't get that kind of honesty very often. Now, how, of course, do these things all tie together? Well, it's easier to see how the Neptune thing and the micronova tie together as it is an entire solar system shift due to the oncoming galactic current sheet. But what about the Beaufort Gyre? What about the effects of ice melting at the polar region? So every 1,500 years, we have a dansgaard oschger event where heating at the poles causes an ice melt, which triggers a cooling event through the rest of the world. There's a more major one called a Heinrich event that happens on the 6,000 year cycle. Of course, the biggest one of all happens on the 12,000 year cycle, which is also when the galactic current sheet arrives, Earth's magnetic field has its cyclical excursion. That's what we are seeing right now. And so in terms of the progression, yes, down the line, as I've said many times, I don't think the solar micronova and the unlocking of the crust, the major parts of the disaster, is going to happen until the 2040s. But over the next several years leading up to the 2040s, we will continue to see these aspects of the solar system shift. And we are already seeing them. Of course, we're already seeing a lot of the changes on Earth. And they are going to, despite what you're going to hear on the news, they're going to resemble those dansgaard oschger events, those Heinrich events where ice is loosed from the polar region. Yes, due to heat, but this, due to Earth's trigger safety mechanism, causes the cooling to begin on the planet. And the more heat that enters the polar region, the hotter it gets up there, and the more ice that melts, the colder it's going to get. It's like a swing. You can push that swing to one side as far as you want, but the further you push it in that direction, the faster it's going to descend and the further to the other side it's going to go in equilibrium. Anyway, it's just a little more on today's top stories. I'll see you in the morning for The Daily Show. Be safe, everyone.